Project. We started off with 24 female entrepreneurs and 16 advanced to take on the first challenge in the Aspiring Women Entrepreneurs Project. Tune in and see who the eight winners will be. Welcome back to the Aspiring Women Entrepreneurs Project. And in today's episode is the Philanthropic Partnerships Challenge. And the judges for today, let me introduce them to you. You're familiar with two of them. Uh, we have Miss Christine Trench joining us once again, as well as Mr. Abner Valladares. And uh, the next judge, no stranger to anyone in Belize, Dr. Dion Chamberlain Miranda. Welcome to the Aspiring Women Entrepreneurs Project and um, in your own words, what are you expecting and what, how would you coin philanthropic partnerships? Um, the purpose of life is not only to be happy, right? It's to actually give back and make sure that you are making an effort to make an impact on this earth. And so it's absolutely important that our entrepreneurs give back and show value within the environment because we're not an island. We depend on people and we need 
to be able to offer some level of support for the vulnerable and those that are having difficulties within our communities. All right, Benny, anything you'd like to add, Mr. Abner? I would just like to add that as business owners, we have a social responsibility to give back. And that it, it, it shouldn't even be just because of our responsibility. Giving back should be something that comes out of, of your heart as a business person. I right, Miss Christine. Um, I believe in um, social responsibility in terms of giving back. And I believe in giving back. Um, you plant seeds, you plant the seeds, you reap and sow. You plant, you reap, and you sow the seeds that you want to plant, like um, sharing, caring, being there, supportive, consideration. And um, the, the, big, the big helps the small to survive in this jungle that we live in. The small helps the big and the big helps the small. So we need that philanthropy. All right, you've heard from our judges and let's see how these participants combine that into their presentation today. First up, we have El Fogon del Cayo. Come on right up. I'm not gonna waste too much time. How are you feeling after the last time for knowing that you progressed to this? I am feeling very happy and um, looking forward to the next challenge. All right, well, go right ahead and take it away. Philanthropy is the love we have for humanity. It, is al it also means generosity, love for one another. A better way of showing generosity and love is by giving back to those people who need. We at El Fogón del Cayo practice this by giving a meal to four of Octavia Waite residents and a caregiver. Octavia Waite is a multi-resident housing facility in, in, intended for the elderly. It is important for a business to practice good business ethics because not only we improve the quality of life for others, but we also build our business loyalty. It, also, it is also an act of goodwill and the, the desire to help fellow human beings. Good, Good practices boost businesses, business reputation in the community, which then helps our businesses to grow and improve our revenue. So far, we have had one visit from our um, elderly and they enjoyed it very much. And this is gonna be a practice once a week on Wednesdays. Thank you very much. Why did you choose? Um, the Octavia way. Um, it's a practice that I've had with my grandchildren already. That um, whenever we see an older person that comes by the restaurant, they would invite him in and they would have him sit and eat, and their kids would interact with the elderly. So it, immediately when I heard about philanthropy, I wanted to do that. And so far, Miss House has been very supportive too. She's in for it, and we had a meeting and um, we had our um, residents come and visit us already once and they liked it. Why is helping the elderly um, align with your business vision and, and why, how does that impact the Kayo society? I think that um, it, in my um, personal situation, it's I want my grandchildren to learn um, to be more humanly from from very young and we were doing it already before and when the, um, it came up about philanthropy it just hit me that we should invite the elderly to come and be with us and that way they um, they learn from very young that they should help. Thank you. You're welcome. And now we'll see how our next participant mixes philanthropic partnerships with her blends. Let's bring on stage Sangria Mia. Come right up. Come to the center and enjoy me. And tell me, how does it feel to have advanced from the last time and being here now? I feel very good, very grateful, and um, just powering through. All right. Well, <laughs> I'm going to give you your time to do your presentation and go right ahead. Impress the judges. All right. Thank you. So my name is Amira Korea Pelayo, and today I will be presenting the Winning Philanthropic Partnership. And as you can see up there, I have something that says there is no planet B. 
And with that, I will ask a question. Wouldn't it be awesome if all businesses thought about Mother Earth before making a profit? One of the factors that is affecting our planet is plastics. Did you know that only 9% of plastics in the world is recycled? In fact, for every minute, there is an estimated garbage truck full of plastics that is dumped in the ocean. This sums up to 17.6 billion pounds per year. Another alarming and concerning data shows or studies shows, and this is a fact, that plastic never goes away. So plastic breaks down, yes, but it breaks down to microplastic. And then microplastics break down to nanoplastics. So nanoplastics, you cannot see it. They can end up in your system, they end up in your food. A data shows that by 2050, oceans will contain more plastic by weight than fish. And do you know who is all affected when something like this happens? We are all affected. And who is responsible? Who is responsible for this? We are the ones who are responsible. So my philanthropic plan has to do with developing a workshop on how to operate a sustainable small business in Belize. But the reason why this one is unique is because it is tailored to Belize. Many of the trainings that exist has, are conducted by organizations that exist Outside of, the, outside of Belize or are done virtually. And these organize, and as much as they do provide valuable information, at times it's a bit challenging to see its applicability to Belize. So the workshop will cover four areas. The first area will look at the importance of being a sustainable business, followed by how, to be a, how, to, how you can be sustainable in operating your business. We will focus on planet, people and profit. And then the next segment of the workshop, we will invite guest speakers who will share their experience, knowledge, and on how to operate sustainably. And then the last section is actually an action plan. An action plan that is in the form of a template that will be used by participants to develop a realistic action plan that will support them in implementing how they will operate sustainably. By the end of October, we will complete the workshop material. In December, we will finalize workshop logistics. We have already started to identify this. Followed by January 2024, we will conduct the workshop with NEMA members, which is an organization for women entrepreneurs. Um, and then in June 2024, we will do a follow-up session to see how this implementation is progressing to provide mentorship guidance to those who attended, attended the workshop. And then by August 2024, we will have a final report. And an important aspect to share here is the little area that I have, which is a training video. Upon calling Oceana and trying to get information, trying to get um, just guidance in this area, I was, I was advised that I should look into creating a training video that can live beyond the workshop. This is important because it addresses the root of the problem. The root of the problem is, the root of the problem is us, really. We are the ones that are putting plastics out there. And then the second reason why this is important is because it will shift perspectives and cultivate behavioral change. And the third one is that it is carving pathways where we are being more than just um, being the change we wish to see, but encouraging others and also having generational impact on our community and planet. And finally, we are achieving not making a profit at the expense of Mother Earth. Thank you. Trying to understand the relationship of that program with your business because you use bottles, right? You use glass bottles. Yes, I use glass bottles. Um, is, what is the correlation between that program and our project? 
and your business or there is some? Well, the correlation is that all businesses are responsible to operate sustainably and we all have a part to play and it's especially businesses that are operating for profit that need to have a change in their mindset in how they think because sustainability is not only for bigger organizations it's not it's not designated to anyone so it is for everyone so i would say that is how it relates Last time she took us under the sea and this time she's bringing a new raw material philanthropic partnerships and let's see how she blends that with her business. Please welcome Nika Zasimas, come right up, come to the center and join me right here. And um, I want to know your thoughts after the last time. How are you feeling after the, after the last challenge of going into this one? Um, I'm feeling good. Feeling good? Yeah. You ready to take this on? Yeah. All right. I'm not going to waste any more time. Jump right into it. The stage is yours. <laughs> Philanthropic. Invest in your health, as I will always say. To support the local community and, pro and promote sustainable development in the areas where the business operates, this will involve investing in communities' development initiatives such as education, health, environmental programs. Our objective is to build strong partnership with like-minded organizations to promote the benefit of CMOS and its sustainable cultivation. This will involve collaboration with organizations that share our vision and our values to increase awareness and promote sustainable practices such as Tata and Oceana to create so social environmental impact by contributing products to the business towards community development environmental initiative. This will involve donating towards donating the juice towards philanthropic initiative that aligns with the value. This is um, where we donate our juice to Stella Maris School. With the juices, the, the fresh juice, the trash, Stella Maris has a a gardening from the garden that's where they um the feeding program allow the kids to to feed from whatever the garden is produced from the garden so the trash they mix it with the soil and plant for them to provide for the for the feeding program access to expertise collaboration with organization that specialize in community development and environmental initiative will allow us to tap into their ex ex expertise and knowledge. This will enable us to develop e effective strategy for promoting sustainable practice and create positive impact by demonstrating our commitment to social and environmental responsibility. We can enhance our reputation and build stronger relationship with our customer and our stakeholders. We believe that our mission aligns with our commitment to promote sustainable cultivation of sea mass and protect the marine ecosystem. Through this partnership, we can collaborate initiative that promote sustainable marine practice and, wait and raise awareness about the importance of protecting our ocean. And again, working with the Stella Marie School of Quality of Life with the school. So also from the juice, the gallon of juice that they will be getting, a tree will be planted in the, the containers. This partnership will enable us to contribute towards community development initiative and align with values such as education, health, environmental pro program, promoting health habits and supporting learning. To inform the community about our philanthropic initiative, we will use multiple challenge. Example, social media. The business will use social media to platform such as Facebook, Instagram, TikTok, WhatsApp, and share information about our partnership, its objectives, and the progress we are making towards achieving them. I will also share educational content about the health benefits of CMOS and role in promoting sustainable development. Our website, we create a website and 
dedicated session on the website that provides information about our philanthropic initiative, our partners, and the progress we are making towards achieving the objective. Events organized such as workshops, seminars, community outreach programs to educate the community about this health benefits of CMOS and its role promoting sustainable development. We will also use the events to promote our partnership and its objective. Thank you guys. <clears throat> How would you, how would I know when I am purchasing something from you, one of your products, that it is, it is helpful um, to Stella Maris, that Stella Maris will benefit from my purchase from you. So, you know, usually the big companies branded, they would say, if you buy this, you will be benefiting, you will be benefiting this organization. So perhaps you could a little um, focus on that so that when you market your goods because if you were this will be something that will be um, the lifeline of your your your, your lifeline of your, your product company yes, yes. not just a one-time project yes so and it has to be marketed marketed in your product so that's where the social media mm -hmm. comes in okay. that's where we will post it on our social media, our website, that what we are doing. Okay, then. Yes. Awesome, then. Okay. Thank, Thank you. you. Promoting the welfare of others. That's what we're doing in today's challenge. And uh, now we have two persons who have been doing this for quite a while towards, or I should say, for our students. Let me introduce or reintroduce to you is it tutoring service ladies make your way back on and uh, congratulations on progressing from last time how are you feeling knowing that you've made it to this next challenge well we feel great and we um especially appreciate the feedback from the branding coaches um well i must agree with my partner the feedback from the judges um were very helpful and so moving forward we'll definitely take all of what was said into consideration all right, well, I'll let you get into it, and here's your chance to impress the judges. Okay, good night, everyone. Um, Melinda Gates once said that philanthropy is not about money. So many times when we hear the word philanthropy, we often think it's just about money. But she made it known that it is about having or using the resources that we have right at our fingertips and applying them to improve the world. We have decided for our philanthropic partnership to offer free reading classes every last Saturday of the month. So you might be asking yourself, why this initiative in the first place? Well, I'm going to say one word and a number and the judges just say ding, 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 if you agree. COVID-19. <laughs> ding, ding, ding. Thank you, judges. And I'll tell you this. In a news report dated June 10, 2022, Honorable Francis Fonseca, the minister responsible for education, he even agrees with all of us by stating that the, the results of the BDAT exam shows an even wider gap due to the pandemic. Now, we've done extensive research and we found out that the library service, the Leah Bradley Library Service, is the perfect um, institution for us to host our free reading program. We've learned that they have areas such as the reference area, the audiovisual room, the computer lab, the serial area, even the lending area, if children would like to borrow books, take home and bring back. But most importantly, they have the children's section. So by May 2023, we plan to write a letter to the National Leo Bradley Library and get their approval to host this program. And through our extensive research, we have created a community asset map for institutions and personnel who can be of um, assistance to us. And so I'll only highlight, of course, some of the institutions in the area that can be of assistance. We have schools in the area, hospital clinics in the area. We have banks. Uh, we have supermarkets in the area. And from those institutions, we can get assistance from the personnel from those institutions to be of assistance to us for our free reading program. Individuals such as merchants and teachers, doctors, nurses, um, even managers and professionals can be um, a part of our philanthropic um, 
endeavors. Keeping with our corporate social responsibility, um, we plan to um, post our free reading program, of course, on our Facebook page. And as we have learned from this workshop, right, all the, the training that we receive, we learned about the hashtags. So if a parent is searching up education, literacy, ACIT tutoring service, reading the Leo Bradley Library, they will be able to find us without any problem. So again, when you think of us, ACIT tutoring service, Everyone's A plus starts with us. Have you have you earmarked what part of your revenue and your time will be allocated? Because at the end of the day, you are a business to make uh, revenue. How do you? I mean, have you earmarked a percentage of what you'll make that will be able to go towards this to make it sustainable? Yes. So we have allocated funds towards this program, and there is room within our budget to. Um, you know, carry out this reading program. Because as they say, everything isn't really free. And in terms of time, we plan to begin at 9 a.m. on the Saturday, 9 to 10 for an hour, they read. 10 to 11, the other partners could come in, reinforce whichever topic we're reading about at that time. And from 11 to 11.30, there will be a small activity. Thank you. Well, I feel relieved. Um, that's two challenges out of four down in the bag. This one was really um, easier because we had already pl started to plan that we wanted to give back to our community, right? So this challenge was more of something, a goal that we already had. And since we are talking about students and children, we'll continue on that track specifically with young girls. And I'd like to reintroduce the CK girls and we'll see how they've managed to intertwine the philanthropic partnerships into their business. Come right into the center. Um, how are you feeling after the last challenge and coming into this challenge? Um, Sienten nervous. <laughs> But excited again. <laughs> so you're ready to, to present to the judges? Definitely. All right. Well, as I always say, it's your turn to impress the judges. Okay, thank you. Good evening. My name is Irma Ramos, an owner and designer for Siku Girl. The word philanthropy comes from the Asian Greek word philanthropia, which means love of humanity. Siku Girls is not only dedicated to make to making unique dresses for little girls to feel like true princes, but we are also dedicated to helping out single mothers in our community. The statistics show that over 80% of single parents' families are hidden by single mothers, nearly a third life in poverty. This is exactly where sick girls would like to provide help. Open. Let's use more. Thank you, Rich. Not only will be donating 50 baby clothing set consisting of hat and sleeping bag in a sleeping sack every six months to catch image. We are also committed to donate three sicker girl, three sicker girls basket which consists of two pillow, two blanket, and three baby clothing set to the three singles mother to give birth and the beginning of each year at Kitchi Mitch. We intend to start all the below this coming year 2024. Donation will be made in gender neutral color, white. June 1st, the first donation of a 50 new bird clothing set will be made to the KHMH Maternity Ward. December 4th, a second donation of 50 new bird clothing set will be made to the KHMH Maternity Ward. January, January 1st, three CK girl basket donated will be given to the first three singles mother to give birth for the New Year's. Sika Girls has already started communication with Miss Flowers, the person in charge of KHMH Maternity Ward. Sika Girls intended to do the above by putting in aside $1.50 
from every dress sold starting June 2023 to put it toward our donating fund. Secret Guard has, the, the, has decided to make the above donate, donation not only because I am passionate about the art of sewing and designer, but because I know what it is to have give birth while being a single mother and a little help goes a long way. Secret Girls will first make an, an, an announcement in a couple of weeks concerning the donation to be made. The intention behind this is to not only spread the word but also have the public more engaged, engaged being that they will not look out for pictures, etc. to come. We will then proceed, proceed to post more pictures once the items are donated. Another main reason for posting via social media platform will be for other, bus other businesses to say what we are doing ha hand potentially and make partnership proposal. One of the main why we, it, which, the, we, is, which we at Seeker Girls practices CSR within our business is not only through the philanthropic, it's only not only through the philanthropic aspect but also by using paper bag for our sales we do not use plastic bag each paper bag is stamped with a logo to give customers that extra personal touch along with providing the company with a little marketing be that the customer that goes about their business with a bag stamped with our logo that alone will show itself but our main reason is to be more eco-friendly the marketing promotion aspect is just an extra. Thank you. I can see the plan, I can feel the plan. I'm just wondering if it's going to be, how effective is it going to be for you to give the KHMH a bunch of, of uh, 50 Yes, 50 uh, sets. sets. As opposed to maybe how, uh, this is, I might be wrong. Maybe just have a communication partnership with them that every time a child is born, that you you go personally. Yeah. No, this this give uh, to the Kechevich, the person Miss Flower, since I'm responsible for that area, I give to Miss Flower. So Miss Flower decides which which uh, people give it. Yes, okay. yes, yes. Okay. I feel excited and and good. No. I, I think so. The, I think I think the judges like it. Yes, I hope. Philanthropic partnerships, that's what this challenge is all about. And we'll see how our next participant blends that into their blends that they already do. So let me reintroduce to you none other than Smitty's natural blends. Make your way on up and welcome back. Tell me how you're feeling after the last challenge. I feel great because I make it to the stage and continue to work with you guys and hopefully i answer your questions all right well i'm not <laughs> gonna waste any more time i'm gonna give you the floor and it's your turn to impress the judges hi again from smitty's natural blend i am adama malik co-owner objective solidified our mantra and what the juices claim to achieve Increase awareness, exposure, and up, on uptake of Smitty's natural blend. Contribute to the overall health of our end users. Increase the brand equity association and knowledge of Smitty's natural blend. Propose partner partners. Be affiliate, Body 2000, Jim overall and individuals why each partners BFLA ideal target for Smitty's natural blend for our juices as majority of their patient are treating for health issues that could be avoided minimized with a health life with a healthier lifestyle body 2000 they, you know, we all go to Body 2000 or any gym, 
we prefer to stay healthy, to look healthy, to feel healthy. So Smitty's Natural Juices comes right in place. Individual, create ambassadors to campaign Smitty's Natural Blend. Smitty's Natural Blend will run three months as a testing phase. As, as right at this present moment, Smitty's Natural Blend has customers every week or every month and we check up on them we give them discounts so we continue to increase that also for every sale after the testing phase by members 50, 50 cents will be allocated to the school feeding program so we are doing that because we partner with ACC and Wesley College at the moment. Benefits of the partnerships. Both parties achieving their goals, objective, and mandate. Great, greater publicity, improve networking, build lasting relationship across sectors. And we are also doing that. Increased quality referral. A timeline. We put July to September because we decided to do more networking, advertising on TV, word of mouth, and meeting. Like I said earlier, weekly check-in with participants for feedback over a month period. By weekly check-in, in for another month, monthly check-in, randomly check-in. So after a month, we will go, we will check in with you. After two weeks, after, after a day or two, we'll check in. The transformation, healthier citizen, healthier beliefs. And that's what Smithies is all about. The realness of the health, the realness of the taste, and the vibrant of the color attracts you to find Smitty's. Thank you. I wanted to ask you, um, the two schools that you have chosen, um, why are they considered schools of, I mean, why were they chosen as your, as your target market for your philanthropic efforts? Well, they choose Smitty's because we went to do an, um, they had a fair and we, they invite us and um, we give away juices so that they can taste. And some of the students, they, they, they had um, some illnesses and so the principal decided to, to start with our juices. Okay. But we get them for, uh, for um, lower prices. Okay. Thank you. I feel nervous because I know reached a certain point, but like I said, if I win or lose, it's a learning experience. These women are working diligently to create partnerships, and this next participant, well, she is no stranger to making amazing creations. Let me reintroduce Queen's Creations. Come up and join us here on the stage, and I need to ask her, uh, how are you feeling knowing that you've made it to this part of the experience i feel very grateful and i'm so thankful to the judges so got me here so you think all that prep with the mentors have you prepared for this moment right now yes i have all right i'm not gonna waste any more time like i say it's your turn to impress the judges hi judges good evening welcome to queen's creation Phil philanthropic partnership so i have two companies that i would like to partner with which is the Mikado, the Textile Palace and Simon Kwan Co Limited. How I plan to go about with this with them, I would ask them for a discount on bulk um, materials so that I can create an amount of scrunchies mainly to provide for school foundations like the children's home and to do giveaways for the locals but of course i will put a twist to it okay so benefit from from proposed partnership building brand awareness 
with that said all of the rest of my pointers will fall in place with that which is engage new business partnership increase my company sales and gain loyal customers and like my quote said no one has ever become poor from giving when it comes to the school for my two pointers i have fears i think of the primary schools and i have business business week and i think of the high schools okay for the foundation with permission of course i would go to the um the children home and between me and them we will plan a fun day it's well it will be mainly for the girls because i believe that the girls from children home need to know that they are beautiful and with my product that will help them to feel that way for the locals i will do giveaways for special events like mother's day valentine's day and christmas how i intend to inform my community of course i will use the social media medium the three main ones are whatsapp facebook and instagram so what i will do i will create different posts related to the time and events thank you for listening to queen's creation philanthropic partnership Go ahead. So program you're looking at. This is um, program early, one time, just early, 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 early incorporated. Because I believe plan. if the community community can give me back, can support me early, yearly, I can support them yearly as well. Okay, then. It's just that it sounds a little bit uh, ambitious. So you may, may want to just consider, because besides the direct costs into making these products, mm -hmm. there is also a cost of your time to go to the schools, the foundations, and the individuals. Okay. When you're doing corporate social responsibility, you would want that the persons who support your business yearly know that they are giving something back to the community so that they are more driven to support you than another company, for instance, which is doing the same business. How are you going to link those purchases that makes me feel good that I'm purchasing from you, that I know that every time I purchase from you that I'm actually supporting um, children or girls at the, um, at the child care center, for instance? Um, well, it's all about giving, so I wouldn't really um, look at that. So it's just about giving for me. Thank you so much. I feel so grateful because I guess it's the judges that, you know, made me get to where I am right now. That last question <laughs> that they asked, it put me to a place of questioning, okay, will I make it or will I not make it? So I'm at that point right now. These women put a lot of heart into preparing for this challenge and especially our next participant. Last time in the branding challenge, she put her heart into showing us what she has and she's joining us back to see how she integrates philanthropic partnerships into her business. Here's Purple Heart Products and uh, welcome back. Uh, how are you feeling having made it to the next stage? Um relieved <laughs> i'm relieved to be here again i want to show how we can give back all right well without further ado here's your chance to impress the judges thank you um good night um purple heart products are small tokens made with love in mind and hands linked to the heart as a newborn business venturing in line with products that focus on spiritual growth calm and relaxing habits that help people remain present and focused um, Purple Heart products also focus and help customers engage, engage in reading, writing, and many other forms of art. As you know that the tips of our fingers have nerves that are connected to our brains, and that's why it's so helpful for kids to be playing, doing manual stuff. And also the stress balls, that's why we use the stress balls. So. Flyers will be given out to the local primary schools and we'll be sharing it on Purple Heart Products social media pages and also on the Carousel Library um, social pages. 
Why? Well, let's just teach kids healthy to go habits from an early age so we can set a healthy core memory. I'll be giving sessions at the Corazal Public Library, reading sessions for kids 5 to 10, Wednesdays and Fridays at 3.30 or 4 p.m. It will be commencing from um, April the 19th. And finger painting sessions for kids 5 to 10, Saturdays at 9, and it commences April the 22nd. So both the library and Purple Heart products will be promoting by means of flyers. We'll be distributing these at the local primary school. And we will also be sharing it on our social media, social media pages. I am a volunteer on the Belize Cannabis Association in line with products that cater towards spiritual growth and calming aspects. Purple Heart products believe in the medical benefits of cannabis, so I work as a volunteer for the Belize Cannabis Association. So Purple Heart products has absolutely no discrimination towards the use of cannabis in all aspects, including cultural and recreational uses. Thank you. Let's. How doable is it for your business to be doing uh, sessions Wednesdays, Fridays, and Saturdays? Because I don't have a location of my own. I actually have my products at other locations. Um, that's why I, I work with the, the bookstores and the coffee shops to help me with my products. And so I do have the free time. And Did you factor into your, your revenue what percentage will be for, for the pain, the pain sessions? I did not factor in. I did not factor in an, a specific number, but I do believe they had told us that one percent is something that we want to look at because one percent of our profit is what we want to look at. Okay, so you look at one percent if it's sustainable yeah. for your for your earnings to to do, to have one percent withheld for your philanthropic. Mm -hmm. um, activity is yes. that doable for you yes okay then awesome. thank you thank you with philanthropic partnerships we can uh, have a positive impact on belize and our next participant has been doing this for the entire time that she's had her business without her really realizing it. Let me reintroduce to you Marlena's tutoring center. Come right up and join me here at the center. And I just want to know uh, what's going through your head having passed and actually won the last challenge and coming into this challenge. Well, it gives me a little bit more confidence. I'm not as nervous anymore. So I'm ready to tell them what I have planned. All right, well, I'm not going to waste any more time. Go and show the judges what you have planned. And like I always say, it's your turn to impress the judges. So again, you know, my new brand, it's Marlena's Tutoring Center, getting back on track. And our philanthropical partnership will be a book and school supplies drive, which will then be the um, work with an adopt a class. How will this work and what is the partnership? Well, I'm looking to partner with Fort Loyola Library, Four Way Stationery and Internet Cafe, as well as a very popular ANR Enterprise Limited. Now, what, how will this work? The project is to adopt a class. We're talking infants class. And the closest schools that is in our area would be Muslim Community Primary School, St. John Vianney RC School, and we will venture out a little bit more to Unity Presbyterian Primary School, which is in the College Division. How will this work? We will get three boxes. So those three boxes will be placed at these locations every two months for a year. So after two months, it's removed and then placed back. How will we get all the information that these boxes are there? One, we will go online live because, of course, we will um, make our um, Facebook uh, media page. Of course, we can't forget that the best way to get out your information is a media house. And what better than Love FM? Everybody watch Love FM, either TV or radio. So that information will be passed on. As well as 
at least once or twice for the year or we, we rotate the places I move to, I go out and be in contact with our customers. How does the adopt a class work? After we have collected the, in the, um, all the supplies, what we do, we share it up in three, and then we either have the, the, our partners or both of us go there and provide, um, donate these supplies to the, to the classroom. Why will be, we will be using the infant's classroom because that is our foundation. A lot of children are unable to read and if we get them to learn to read at the foundation, we get them to learn everything else. Because if you want to read, if you learn to read, you know how to read your instructions for maths, you know how to read your um, information for social studies, science, everything else. I rotate the schools. What do I mean by rotating the schools? If this month, I will take my infant's class from Muslim Community Primary School. I will um, speak to the teacher. Who is the student in your class that needs the most help? I take that child for that one month, and that child gets free tutoring service from myself. The next month, I go to the next school, and just like that. How do I know which children need help? Well, of course, we communicate with the teachers. How do I know what kind of supplies they need or what kind of reading book they need or whatever other help they need? Constant communication with the teachers. I run my tutoring service six weeks in the summer. So again, I go back to the teachers. Although we had those children, we had one person for the month, we go back, assess them. Who was your weakest child for that whole year and still need help? I take three children, one from each school, and I provide them that tutoring service for that summer program. After the whole year is completed, we go back again, we assess. How was our program? How did it work? What needs to be changed? How do we fix it? Did your class get help? Can we move on to another class? So good, we started at Infant 1, and probably we can help the Infant 2 class. Because remember, when we think about reading books, if that class have it, then you can, the new students that is coming in, you can use that same supply so then I can help another class. So eventually, eventually, as the years go by, we might reach the whole school. Thank you. Um, I really love your concept, one starfish at a time. I mean... It, 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 it shows that it's sustainable because you're giving of yourself and your time. Um, the only area that I had concern in with is that it could affect your brand in terms of your um, requesting donations like in front of a store with a box. Um, it, so um, that could, I mean, it could look as if we are um, begging more than, you know, I mean, a part of philanthropy, but other than that part that I guess you can fine tune that maybe a and R support you by having that box inside support you by you doing that marketing um i i, I really like the fact that it's 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 a small bite that will have long-term impact and that it's not biting off more than you can chew so congrats on that i like most what i like i am a strategic person so i like the assessment part that you assess you look where you need to improve revamp and come back again with your initiative and I believe that is part of um, sustainability because once you, you keep on continuous improve, you ensure sustainability. Awesome. Thanks. Our next participant has planet Earth on her mind. That's a given fact. But I'm sure for this session, she also has the inhabitants of planet Earth. Let me bring on to the stage Refilerico. Welcome back to this session, Philanthropic Partnerships. Um, tell me, how was it like preparing for this challenge? It was really enjoyable preparing for this challenge. As you said, Refillery has planet Earth on the mind, and we have our society on the mind too. So it was really good navigating the partners and, and learning how to, to grow a philanthropic project. All right. Well, you know what time it is. It's time for you to impress the judges. Good night, judges. I'm Tammy Rock from Refillery Co., and it's a pleasure to present our philanthropic model for our partnerships for Refillery Co. In something I call the Good Clean Fund. And in looking at our, 
or possible partners we considered our values, which are in three. Environmental protection, which is minimizing waste impact and protecting the use of nature's resources. Our second value is social development. Being socially responsible organization is key to refillery coal. And the third is sustainable growth. Refillery coal, of course, wants to grow in scope and scale, but we want to construct an environment in which the business can thrive through sustainability. And that's where the Good Clean Fund comes in. The aim of the Good Clean Fund is to plant more trees, to protect the seas, and to feed Belize. We aim to do this through donations to from two avenues to the fund. The first type of donation is a donation that's attached to sales of a specific retail item that we sell. The second charity would be to generate point of sale donations to the fund as we explain our partnerships to our consumers. We've reached out to three partners who have expressed interest in participating in our fund. The first is a fund that's, that is an organization that's very close to my heart. It's called the Shepherd's Table Feeding Program in Belize City. Their vision is to grow their, their feeding program. And so we've identified that we could help them through meal sponsorship and through developing their program infrastructure, ensuring that they have the proper storage facilities, stoves, refrigeration, um, other utensils that they may need to support the feeding program. The next objective of protecting the sea, we reached out to our partners at Sea of Life. Sea of Life is a really cool organization that's based here in Belize. It, it ensures that global goodwill and resources are generated in order to support Caribbean-based ocean-focused projects. And thirdly, our objective of planting more trees, we've reached out to Trees Belize, which is the Toucan Ridge Ecological and Educational Society. It's based in Middlesex Village, which is on the Hummingbird Highway in Belize. And this is an organization that is, their main focus is conserving the nature, the natural and cultural heritage of Belize. So the fund project timeline is based on the yearly quarters. We are in the second quarter, and we have done the preliminary discussions with these organizations. We aim to, to set realistic goals and expectations by doing a needs-based assessment of each of the organizations and aligning our campaign to align with the organizational values. Ensuring the fund has a, transparent, um, a transparency and growth. In the third quarter, we aim to begin the first campaign. The project that's most ready for, for rollout is the campaign with the Shepherd's Table. So we aim to start the, in the first quarter the support to the Shepherd's Table, and in the fourth quarter, roll out the, the second and third campaigns. Our marketing strategy is simple. All of us have social media. We aim to, to have cross-advertisement including paid or sponsored advertisements via the Meta platform or the Love Foundation. We want to do a media tour, which all the organizations have the ability to participate and speak more. Reminders at point of sale, especially for our new customers. As we continue to raise awareness about the project, remember one of the ways that we aim to grow the fund is through point of sale donations. And so we want to give our new customers a polite reminder about what refillery is about and what we do apart from, from retail. And then a call for volunteers and sponsors. Apart from the funding resources that we want to generate, this is a way to increase awareness in general about these, um, these really wonderful organizations and societies and what they're doing, like the Shepherd's Table and what they're doing for school children um, so that they're adequately nourished and spiritually uplifted as they receive an education. And so we want to ensure that there is a room for volunteers and sponsors and for the community to engage with these projects and do even more than just donate a few pennies or a few dollars. And that's the end of my philanthropic uh, partnership project. I'm open to questions. Impressive presentation. Um, just from my understanding, what is refills co-direct contribution to the fund is from, like, do you have in mind already a certain percentage from your revenues going to sure. the fund? Of course. 
Um, as I mentioned earlier on, we, we have two potential funding strategies. The first is tying donations to specific retail items. Once we have rolled out this fund or this, um, this partnership strategy, then we let our, our customers know. We have some, a new product under development called a sustainable, which is a coconut bowl um, that's made from discarded coconut shells. If you purchase a coconut bowl, 10% of the sales goes to our, our good clean fund, for instance. If you purchase a refill of a gallon, 10% of that goes to the good clean fund. Um, and that's how that, part, that strategic objective is, is fulfilled. Thanks so much. I thought it was, was really interest, an interesting project because it, it really had you thinking about how to, to create something that you really actually do want to action on at, later on in your business. I think I, I responded as honestly and transparently on what I know so far <laughs> about it. Our next participant, she's a master of whipping up fudge in the kitchen, and I'm sure with the mentorship she received, she'll be able to whip up some great partnerships when it comes to her business. Let me reintroduce to you, Lacure Fudge. Welcome back, and tell me how you're feeling after the last challenge and progressing to this challenge here. I feel excited and I'm ready to wrap up this one here. Ready to make your mentors proud? Yes, I am. All right, well, you know the drill. It's time for you to impress the judges. <laughs> for my philanthropic challenge, I choose to do a restoration in other, another world village um, in Rain Creek Village. This is the current situation of the park that I chose to do. It's, uh, it has been abandoned for the past two years and nobody has done anything about it to fix it or nothing at all. So this is why I chose to fix this park, to restore this park, sorry. The problem, the park needs to be chopped and raked. The fence needs to be clean and repaired. The benches, seesaw, monkey bars need painting. The swings need to be installed because currently they don't have any. And the playhouse needs to be power washed and repaint. The goal and objective of this project is to restore back the community park, give it back life and energy so the kids can engage in physical activity activity within the park, encouraging kids to develop their motor growth skills, encouraging kid children flexibility and balance, and providing outdoor space where kids and adults can socialize. I propose to launch the date for this project May the 13th, up until May the 14th. The reason why I chose to do chose those dates is because I will be on holiday and I will more than be willing to give back my time. I have already gotten quotation from hardware stores for the paint, the swings, and the other stuff that I will be needing. I have already approached the chairman and presented my plan as what La Care Fudge intends to do for the community. I have already visited the, biz the local business in my village, that is Chun Grocery Store, to seek donation towards the project that is to purchase the necessary equipments and supplies. Um, I have already gathered a team of volunteers to assist with the project and to, but to advertise this project and have the villagers know what I'll be doing. I have created, I will be posting on my social media page so they can, so I can keep them updated as to what I will be doing. After the park is restored, La Cure Fudge will be doing a small groundbreaking ceremony to show the community the end result of the project do a formal invitation to the chairman and businesses that has donated, invited local media houses and villagers to witness, witness the ceremony, provide small refreshments for them, and Lacquer Fudge intend in adapting the park for one year to, and pledge to maintain the park yard by keeping it chopped and maintained. And that's the end of my presentation. Um, I'm just wondering about your Owning this on your own is, is, a, is very heavy. It's a project. And what are your plans after the year is over? 
Well, I like I've mentioned that I spoke to the business owners and the chairman, and they had also pledged to assist with the um, with me taking care of the park. It's not okay. only me that will do it. And after the year is over, the chairman decided that they will deal with the park after that. So yeah. You see, when you're looking at CSR, it's it's not a one-time project. It's continuous. You have a plan. You start with this park, and then you move to another, if you want to do it by project, then in the second phase, you, you have to plan, put this into um, consideration that your CSR is long term, okay. and, and not a one time event. It's okay. a life for your, 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 continue your, your doing. organization. Okay, then. Okay? She's been busy helping to build businesses, but now after the brilliant mentorship that she's received, she'll help to build bees even more. A lot of bees, and I'm glad I didn't stumble on all those bees. Here's a Belize a business a builder. Come right, well, you're already there right in. Now, what is the feeling like having progressed from the first session to this one? I am feeling good, and I am also very optimistic especially about this challenge and maybe even the potential of forming partnership and even sponsorship all right i love the confidence well you know what i'm going to give you the floor because it's your turn to impress the judges thank you now the philanthropic partnership is something that is very close and dear to my heart now if you notice i have decided to partner with the Department of Youth Services. Now, I lost my mother when I was 17 years old. I could have been an at-risk youth, but I did not. I had someone that saw potential in me and what I am able to do if I am given a chance. And that was my pastor, Father Matt. Now, for this philanthropic approach with the Department of Youth Services, it's going to be more of a practical approach that is geared towards at-risk youths. Now, it's going to be called a practical startup. So it's a step towards financial freedom, being self-sufficient, and also building Belize's economy with their small business. We have decided that we are going to ask different businesses to sponsor, if it's monetary spon sponsoring, if it's materials, then we would accept that towards this initiative. Now, I have locked in a partnership with the Department of Youth Services. So I have spoken with the director, uh, the director of the Department of Youth Services, and we have agreed to start this decision June 1st. We are going to first have them create a business model. Not a business plan, but a business model. After we are going to do the legal registration for them, so it's going to be an eight weeks program where we go through all of these stages with them and teach them the skills that they need to start their very own small business. We will also go through the, some of the same stages that we went through here, branding, product development, and we are going to launch this initiative. So at the end of this partnership, at the end of this program, they will not only have theory, they will not only have the skills, but they will have an actual, actual product to present to, the, to their community as well. And after we have done this, we are going to have bi-weekly focus group to make sure that these youths are remaining on track and are following the right direction in regards to running their business. What we are going to do, we are going to present sponsorship letters to different organizations to ask for sponsorship. We are going to bring awareness to this initiative through social media ads, 
Facebook, Instagram, LinkedIn, radio TV ads, information pop-up boots, flyers, and brochures. Now, I am willing to give my time. I am willing to give my knowledge. I am willing to get to motivate them to guide these at-risk youths to become the best version of themselves and to be productive citizens of our society. Like they say, our children is the future and now is the time for us to invest in our future. You have to be careful because it's the same services that you are offering in terms of professional services versus your, your, your CSR services. Usually CSR is something outside of what you are actually, your, your actual service. So, but if it is um, Department of Youth Service driven, then it probably won't be, um, create too much of a, uh, um, um, observing too much of you and like the business, your, your professional service and that becoming one. That is what you have to be careful about, okay? What are some concerns? We'll be honest. Um, I was very optimistic about my presentation and moving forward on my initiative, um, especially dealing with um, at-risk youths. However, it seemed as if though <laughs> it's it's not something that would allow me to offer the services that I have and, and um, assist those at risk youths at the same time. I definitely have to re-strategize, um, even if it's me helping one youth at a time, then that is what I am going to do. And we'll keep the flow going with today's challenge. And the next participant has a new arsenal in her equipment. That's the mentorship she received in the philanthropic partnerships. And we'll see how she uses that to help improve her business even further. Let me bring back onto the stage of Flo's pristine services. And um, tell me, how are you feeling going into this challenge? Hopeful. Hopeful. You've did all the homework, you, you've researched and made sure that you prepared well, right? Yes. Ready to make your mentor proud? Yes. <laughs> all right, well, take it away. It's your turn to impress the judges. Good evening. A flows pristine good evening again to you judges. My philanthropic partnership, I focused on mainly my community. I wanted to make an impact, but starting small. I chose St. Martin's The Poorest School. The reason for this is because it's in my community, as I mentioned, and as a mom, my son always talks about, mom, the world is sick, and how are we gonna fix the world? What a big weight to put on my shoulders, right? So I said, with this challenge, it came in on like the perfect note. I chose that I would choose St. Martin de Porres School to clean their windows every six months. Also, Whenever school closes, I decide, I chose that I would give the, the, the school a cleaning. So whenever school reopens, they have a fresh learning space. I believe that mental health starts with a clean space. So this works well in hand for Flo's Pristine. My objectives, connecting the mind, body and surrounding to bring awareness to mental health and the environmental sustainability to contribute to the local community by providing cleaning services to underprivileged individuals, schools, and in the future, nonprofit organizations. To create a positive impact on the environment by promoting eco-friendly cleaning products to enhance brand reputation and loyalty amongst customers and partners by highlighting the commitment to social responsibility. The benefits of my partnership with these partners are the ability to give back to the community by showcasing mutual commitment to social and environmental responsibilities. Partnership with Green Clean, which is a company I'm looking forward to, to part with, partnership with. It's not in the process yet, but St. Martin is already in process. Partnership with, green, with the Green Clean company to use their products for, a free, for the free services I offer. 
a window for a mutual opportunity to showcase both products and services and, and securing sales. Opportunity to mutually connect further with nonprofit organization to provide an, ad an additional service to families they assist. With this partnership, I envision that I'm going to have a cycle here. I'm going to help the earth. I'm going to help a school and I'm going to help the school and my son, mine. I mean, for such a big responsibility in helping the world, I mean, in helping the, the environment stay clean, I think that's the best initiative for me as a cleaning service, showing the kids that cleaning comes from you. If you clean your space, you have the ability to think freely, to enjoy your space. How am I going to do this? I'm going to broadcast it again on the platforms that everyone has. Facebook, um, YouTube, I mean, sorry, Facebook, WhatsApp, Instagram, and the media platform as well. Thank you. Thank you. Um, excellent. How do you plan to link um, your clients so that your clients realize that they're giving back to the St. Martin, the poorest, community and i think it's a good one because a lot of people from all over the city go to that church they may not have their children going to the school but i know that that's so how do you then tie them into the community so that they understand that every time they use your services they're actually supporting that community at the end of the day um i was thinking that if i say for every sale I give on window cleaning only, I'm gonna donate maybe a fraction of my sales to give back or to buy my to, to get my my products. And that in itself will show them that whenever you get a, a cleaning from Flores Pristine, you're giving back to not me but the community. Because I'm offering here window cleaning every six months to the school. Thank you. Thank you too. These presentations have been inspiring to say the least and our final participant for today's challenge well she has been inspired by her passion to create many wonderful things I'm going to reintroduce and come back up to the stage in Inspiraciones Mabi Mabi welcome back I need to know your thoughts after the last challenge and going into this challenge how are you feeling God firstly and I'm very happy that I'm still here and um, very excited ready to show ready. Your, ready to show your mentor that you've been listening <laughs> yes sir <laughs> all right well mommy it's your turn to impress the judges Thank you. good night judges I would like to share you um, my team for tonight on philanthropic partnership um, which is generosity plus the mark equals to a happy tummy. I have three proposed partners, which is Kayo, um, Welfare, uh, sorry, Kayo Animal Welfare Society, um, Lita's Jalapeno Poppers, and the Water Board Office. Each of these, each of these um, businesses and organization has different operations, but there is something in common that we have to make this goal a reality. Why partner with them? These are different businesses and organizations, as I mentioned, but have the same compassion for animals, which reinforces my objective. My objective is to create these dog gravity feeders made of PVC items and, um, and uh, place it on public places where we normally see um, street dogs. These are two ways that I have in mind to make this possible. Asking for donations for PVC, uh, maybe at construction places, and also, hence why I included the water board offices, which they um, use and work with PVC tubes. So our mission is to ask for donations for these damaged um, items that they no longer use. Um, I also have in mind to involve my community, to involve my community by 
collecting all these plastic bottles, um, maybe place containers at public places where we can collect these uh, plastic bottles and then sell it to gain some money and use this money to buy the food that we will be needing for these feeders. So hence why I have um, implemented these to also help our environment by we are reducing um, waste, we are reusing our PVC, damaged PVC that we will get from donations, hopefully, and recycling. By creating a partnership with this grown, recognized businesses helps my small business to obtain more visibility and publicity. I also pretty sure that with more publicity, I will gain new customers. A new customer equals to more sales, more orders. First of all, I need to have the idea, goal set. What is my objective? To brainstorm, action plan, and following communicating to my partners, which are my proposed partners, put goal in action, start collecting the necessary items, the donations, and implement the recycling project, which will be the collecting of the uh, plastic bottles. Inform the, inform the public of our program. How do I intend to inform them to know about this cause? Create campaigns, distribute flyers, post on our business pages, which are Facebook, or even use WhatsApp messages to our customers so that they can know about this. At the end of December 2023, uh, we plan to make a brief financial statement to see how far we have reached with donations and the money earned from the recollecting of plastic bottles. And 2024, our idea is to implement our first recycled dog feeders. Animals have no voice. They can ask for, they cannot ask for help. They can ask, they cannot ask for freedom. They cannot ask for protection. Humanity must be their voice. Saving and helping defenseless animals is our passion. And yours, thank you very much. I, I absolutely love the concept. I believe that your community members may just pass by and fill the containers if you have that. Are these pipes going to be branded with your logo or something that shows that it's your company that's doing it? Um, I never thought about that, but that will be good. And, and because at some point in time, you have to brand the product and link it to what it is that you're doing. And that offers you quite a bit of visibility out in public spaces at the end of the day. Um, but congrats, I think, it's, a, I think it's, it's something really worthwhile doing and I can see how a lot of people would be involved yes. and how the entire community could be a part of it. Just the branding and the linking back to you and your product is where I'd love to see that part of your initiative. Okay. Maybe I missed it. Have you identified where these feeders will be placed? Yes, yes. Uh, maybe at um, terminals or uh, um, light posts at the public places where, because I already have seen some places, for example, in my community, where we see stray dogs. So um, we have already um, have, have that idea where, where are we gonna. Thank you so much. Thank you too, thank you. Uh, very confident, very confident because I didn't talk about what um, the last judge um, t told me. So I think I'll have to also um, analyze that. Next step will be to implement this, to take action, because this is something that I really want to do. Um, so hopefully we can have uh, the donors, we have um, the community help, and hopefully we can make it. And we've almost reached the end of today's challenge. 14 participants will become 12 for our next session. But before we announce the two that will, unfortunately, we'll have to say goodbye on this journey too. I'd like to welcome Dr. Sylvia Katuz, who was the lead mentor in the philanthropic partnerships session. And uh, also joining her will be uh, Cindy Blanco, who will be giving the certificate. Dr. Katuz, I need to ask you, what is your impression from the presentations you saw from these women that you mentored? Richard, it was really awesome to see how far 
these women entrepreneurs have come since that first night of mentoring. But what was also delightful was to see that many of them were already involved in an, our philanthropic activities even before the mentorship. So the mentoring just kind of sharpened up um, their particular projects. Um, there were some really interesting ones. Um, some of them, though, were more promotional uh, rather than purely uh, philanthropic. Also, there were some that were really good community projects, but they were not brand aligned. Really good, but not brand aligned. All right, well, it seems that you've impressed Dr. Katusa, and without further ado, I'll let you take it over. Okay, so it's always wonderful to do good while doing good, which is the essence, right, of our social responsibility, corporate social responsibility. There are some honorable mentions uh, that the points were really close. I mean, Cindy and I probably got a few gray hairs uh, over this. Really, really close. Uh, we have a few honorable mentions, which I'd like to do first. Uh, the first honorable mention is Sangria Mia. Uh, second one, in no particular order as such, is ACID Tutorial and then Refillery. And then, Cindy, you want to announce the winner? Sure. So the winner for tonight's challenge is no other than CK Girls. CK Girls, uh, make your way on up. Come and receive your certificate. Uh, go over right there and receive it. Congratulations. You are the winner for the Philanthropic Partnerships Challenge. Come right over here. Uh, and I just want to ask you on your thoughts real quickly. Uh, how does it feel to win the challenge? I'm really happy. <laughs> thank you. Thank you, thank you, because the competition is really hard. All the ladies is mm, really good. <laughs> so... Thank you so much. All right, and thank you too. You can go and have your seat. Thank you. Uh, and thank you so much as well, Dr. Katus and Cindy. Now, let's get ready because, like I said, 14 will become 12 for our next challenge. And I don't have the hard task this time around. Actually, I'd like to pass it over to one of our judges, Mr. Abner. You have the task, so take it over. Yes, I do. And while I have the hardest task of, of the evening, I want to first of all say how much I have enjoyed being a judge today. I have learned a lot. Um, it, it's always a learning experience and it's always touching to see uh, the passion and all the hard work that you ladies have put into this. I think you all deserve an honorary hand of applause for it. So without any um, further ado, um, the two participants being eliminated from this segment are Smith's Natural Blend and Queen's Creation. Thank you and very good work. All right, and thank you too to the judges. I'm pretty sure it was a very hard decision to have to say goodbye to two of them, but I'm sure you ladies have gathered uh, much knowledge from, the, from your mentors and from this whole project on a whole. Twelve more remain, and the next time you join us, it will be all about product development. But we want to say thank you to our sponsors. We want to say thank you to ICDF Taiwan, to the Rotary Club of Belize and to Love Foundation and to the sponsors for our set. We want to say thank you to Quartz Belize, Angelus Press and Old Belize. Well, join us next time as we bring to you the product development challenge for the aspiring women entrepreneurs. <laughs>